Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in the last one we looked at the Nvidia Titan V, a once $3,000 graphics card and possibly the best pre-RTX option out there. With a 90% price drop over the past 8 years, this aging beast is certainly worth considering, especially as it can still pump out respectable performance figures. Of course the Titan V lacks dedicated RT cores, meaning certain games will lock away ray tracing settings and others won't start at all. One game that will still give us access to the same ray tracing options, as well as path tracing, as if we had an RTX card in the system, is Cyberpunk 2077. Of course the lack of dedicated hardware RT cores means that performance is far from perfect, and the lack of DLSS means we can't improve the frame rates using Nvidia's upscaling tech. We do however have access to AMD's FSR and Intel's XESS. After messing around with the settings, I found that Intel's XESS 2.0 worked better than both FSR options here in terms of delivering better performance. First of all we have the RT Ultra preset with XESS 2.0 quality mode enabled. It's clear that we do have upscaling on, as there is a noticeable dip to the visual clarity, with blurriness and jagged lines visible around certain objects. But it runs, and it runs pretty well. I started off exploring the Badlands outside of Night City and performance here is always better because there is a lot less going on. I was still surprised to see at least 60fps some of the time, especially as I had resigned myself to a 30fps frame rate target at best. Not bad at all. Sure, maybe it won't look as good as if we had dedicated RT cores, but it's clear that the ray tracing effects are enabled here. It looks pretty good. Let's head back into Night City now and see how performance holds up with these same settings applied. RT Ultra with XESS 2.0 set to quality mode. A walk through this busy market area meant that we just about saw 30 frames per second, some of the time anyway, but performance did pick back up as we made our way onto the street. Here's another example of the game, albeit a different area, running with over 30 FPS most of the time. Now there will still be drops below this and we could certainly drop the XESS preset to say balanced or performance, but that will make things look noticeably worse. I started out hoping for at least 30 FPS with ray tracing using the Titan V, and we got that without sacrificing the image quality too much, so I was happy to stick to this preset. Overall, we saw closer to 40 frames per second, that's according to my custom benchmark run, which involved a bit of driving and then walking across a certain route through the city. Let's go one step further then and enable the RT Overdrive preset, which of course enables path tracing. We're back in the Badlands for this one at native 1080p resolution, and as you can see, well, we're getting basically what I expected from the performance. Before, with RT Ultra, there was a difference in the frame rate between the countryside and city. With path tracing on, it doesn't really matter where we are on the map the frame rate won't exceed 15 fps and most of the time it will hover around 10. This is just too intensive for our Titan V. That is until we enable our old friend XESS. This time I'm going for ultra performance mode which I think is upscaling from 360p. Yeah I think it's 640 by 360 here. We get the same jagged lines and flickering that we saw before, along with a far softer image quality, but it doesn't look horrific for 360p at all, and that's always a bonus. The enhanced lighting effects are still noticeable. As we move on to a couple of city scenes now, we will be sticking with the ultra performance upscaling, and I'm sure you can see why. I said before that at native resolution with path tracing, performance is identical between the city and the countryside. However, when XESS is enabled, the performance disparity returns and Night City is far more demanding on our Titan. Wandering around this apartment complex with various lighting and smoke effects will take its toll on our pre-RTX hardware, but we still get at least 30 FPS most of the time. It's a similar story for the market area and surrounding streets. We still hit 30 FPS and overall our average came back at nearly 40 once again, but there will be dips to the high 20s. 
If you wanted to play the game like this for whatever reason, then I'd suggest a 30 FPS cap just to make some of the performance drops feel less noticeable. There didn't seem to be any significant issues here, and I think the 12 gigs of VRAM is also to thank. It gives us a bit of extra headroom for the most intensive settings that this game has to offer. Like I said before, we probably aren't getting the same level of visual effects that a newer NVIDIA RTX or AMD RX card would offer, but it's pretty cool that we can still enable the ray tracing and path tracing options on this old beast of a card in Cyberpunk 2077. Now though, let's add a bit of context. This is the RTX 3050, the original and superior 8 gig version of the card. This is one of the most entry level ways into the world of hardware ray tracing, though most of the time you're probably going to want to leave such settings turned off to maximise performance. That said, I wanted to see how the performance compared between this and the Titan V in Cyberpunk. How does one of the cheapest RTX cards hold up compared to one of the best non-RTX cards when it comes to ray tracing and path tracing here. Now of course the 3050 also offers access to DLSS upscaling which will look better than the XESS we have been using, but in the interest of fairness I tested this with the same XESS preset but I also threw in DLSS afterwards. Here is a brief snippet of the RTX 3050 8 gig in action with the RT Ultra preset enabled using native 1920 by 1080. At first glance, performance doesn't look too dissimilar from the Titan V, though it does appear to be doing slightly better despite offering less VRAM. We can see that we're pretty much maxed out on that front. Before I throw up a selection of comparative figures, let's see how ray tracing overdrive with path tracing runs. Yeah, it's basically what I expected from a modern entry level RTX card. We aren't going to get anywhere near playable frame rates without upscaling, so let's talk about the results and see how close the 3050 and Titan V are. One with native hardware based RT support and one that's basically using pure brute force and power to render the extra lighting effect. So I thought the results seemed pretty close without any comparative figures, but when we throw those up on screen now, using the RT Ultra preset at native resolution, we can see that there is a clear difference, though both of these results aren't exactly what I would call playable. The Titan V managed the RT Ultra preset uh, at 17 frames per second with a 1% low of 14 and a 0.1% low of 9, and the 3050 pulled slightly ahead with 25 FPS on average, a 1% low of 20 and a 0.1% low of 18. So not only was the average better, but it was more consistent too. When we look at the RT Ultra preset with XESS2 enabled, as well as DLSS Transformer mode enabled, set to quality as well, well we can see that the 3050 pulls ahead once again, although this time the results are close. So the Titan V managed 38 FPS with XESS quality, and the 3050 managed 46 frames per second. So we're looking at 8, 9 frames per second more here, as well as smoother percentile lows of course. Now, when we look at the DLSS result, this is with DLSS transformer mode, a set to quality as well, we are seeing less performance from it. 41 frames per second is still better than the Titan V, of course, which lacks native ray tracing support on a hardware level, but you will be better off sticking to XESS to maximize performance from this entry level RTX GPU. Switching to RT Overdrive now with path tracing enabled of course, and it's basically unplayable for both cards. The Titan V hits 7 FPS on average with 1% lows of 6 and a 0.1% low of 6. So it was consistent but consistently terrible. The 3050 didn't do much better, 12 FPS here with a 1% low of 9 and a 0.1% low of 8. Now when we enable upscaling again, both XESS and DLSS Transformer using the Ultra Performance preset, we can see that the Titan V managed 39 frames per second uh, with XESS 2.0 Ultra Performance. With the exact same settings using the 3050, we got 48 frames per second from that card, so 9 FPS more on average with improved percentile lows. And this time around, enabling DLSS instead of XESS didn't make 
a difference really to the performance figures. We still got 48 frames per second. Uh, the 1% low was actually slightly better, 39, as was the 0.1% number, 36. So no real difference here, but visually DLSS looks so much better than XESS. And of course, it's a shame we can't utilize it on the Titan V, but that's just how things are. And there we have it, the Titan V versus ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077. I don't think it was too bad to be honest. Sure, it lost out to the modern RTX 3050 as expected, but the results weren't worlds away or not as different as I initially anticipated. I don't have an RTX 2060 on hand, otherwise I'd have thrown that into the ring as well, and I'd expect those results to be closer together. I'll have one more Titan V video coming up very soon, I'll be comparing it to the legendary 1080 Ti, a top tier GTX car that was essentially the sensible and more suitably priced alternative to this powerhouse back in the day. As for this one though, well thank you for watching, let me know your thoughts down below, and as always I hope to see you all in the next one.